Huge investment bank, Deutsche Bank, has introduced its so-called Fab Five Chinese EV startups. And to be honest, this is a really good reason why you shouldn't listen to banks, investment banks. They have no idea what they're talking about. They hire people who do about one hour study and then come out with some sort of professional advice on why you should invest in these electric car companies because they're our Fab Five. Well, I'm here to show you the real Fab Five and why they are the real Fab Five in China. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. You are watching the YouTube channel that makes more videos about electric cars and batteries than anyone else. Now, big shout out to the Patreon supporters of the channel. You make this channel work. I really appreciate your support. It means a lot. I'll put a link in the description below to my Patreon account. If you'd like to support the channel in 2022, I would really appreciate your support. So Deutsche Bank's Fab Five. It's a joke. And I'm going to show you why, because I'm going to give you a quick overview, very quick overview of the entire Chinese electric new energy vehicle automotive industry. What's going on? Just give you a quick snapshot. You're going to understand it real fast. Here it is in five minutes. Firstly, Edison Yu's team has updated their list of Chinese electric vehicle startups that they are bullish on, dropping WM Motor and adding Zika and Hozon Auto. Now, I don't think this company, Deutsche Bank, has any idea what they're talking about because Zika is not a standalone brand. So uh, it's just mythological to me that they would actually say, yeah, buy Zika. Uh, how? How are these people going to buy Zika? It's owned by a parent company. Anyway, moving on. Now, last year, Deutsche Bank introduced what they believe are the most promising electric, emerging electric vehicle companies. Neo, Xpeng, Li Auto, and WM Motor, and they called them the Fab Four. Now, obviously, they aren't even electric car companies. One of them just makes plug-in hybrids. Li Auto doesn't make electric cars. Well, they do, but they make plug-in hybrids. They don't make a single electric car. They never have. As far as I know, they don't plan to even make one. So classifying them as an electric car company, well, clearly that's a misnomer. Anyway, moving on. Heading into 2022, Edison News team Apparently, he has a team of people that help him to do this research and then come up with, with these bizarre results. Has updated their list, dropping WM Motor and adding Geely Zika and Hoson Auto, which owns the Nita brand. Basically, Hoson is Nita. It's very confusing. A lot of these Chinese branding, I don't know why, but they like to confuse people. That's a fact, they do. But Hoson Auto is Nita. So when anyone says Nita or says Hoson, same thing. Now, what? happened is, in a research note sent to investors on Monday, Yu's team said that they maintain their view that Neo, Xpeng, and Li Auto are the leaders among the local upstarts, summarizing the strong delivery numbers posted by the three companies on January the 1st. Now, I don't believe they are the leaders. I believe two of them are. One of them is a leader. One of them is doing pretty good. And the other one is just a plug-in hybrid company. But I'm going to give you a quick overview of that in a second. Now, the team did not say much more about these three companies, considering they had been tracking them closely previously. For Zika, Yu's team sees it as an attempt by Geely to more effectively compete with local upstarts and Tesla. But remember, Zika is not really about just being a local brand. Zika are focusing on selling vehicles globally. That's their ambition. As background, in March 2021, Zika was officially launched. On April 15th, Zika's first model, the Zika 001, was announced, a, remaining, a renaming of the model previously known as the Link Zero. Now, this Zika vehicle is available with a price range of $44,000 US dollars up to around $58,000 US dollars for the top model. I made a video about this vehicle, the Zika 001, and I've got to say, it is incredibly impressive. I would really love to own one. Hopefully, they come to Australia soon. I'll put a link in the description below to that car. Now, on June the 15th, the company said it had sold out its deliverable production for 2021. This is really important to note. Production matters. It doesn't matter if you make an excellent car and plan on selling it worldwide. What matters is your ability to produce vehicles. So that's what I'm looking at in how I assess these companies. Do they have the ability to produce lots of vehicles in 2022 and probably therefore 2023 as well? This is really important. It doesn't matter how good the car is. If no one can buy it, it's irrelevant. Problem with Ionic 5, fantastic car. Hyundai just doesn't make many of them. Now, this is what they said. We think Zika has fused together European 
design quality, blah, 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 blah. Good things about Zika. It's a great car. Check out the video I made. What about Hoson? What used team believes the company's success appears to be driven by a focus on value very much. These are the best value EVs in the world with products that are inexpensive, but filled with streamlined technology, such as a robust entertainment package, voice recognition, and, rec and regular over-the-air updates. Now, I'll put a link in the description below to the videos I've made about Nita and the well, about Hoson, Nita, whatever you want to call them. Nita make incredibly impressive vehicles for the price. They are just truly unbeatable at the price point they're at. If you are looking for an affordable EV, this honestly mind-blowing what you get for the money. So check those out as well. Now, the team says that Hoson may face some stiff competition from Xiaomi and Beidou but believes Nita is one to watch going forward. Now, I don't know how they're going to face stiff competition from Xiaomi and Beidou because these guys don't even plan on launching EVs in the price range of Nita and Hoson. It would only take a Google search that would take them probably 20 seconds to work that information out. So anyway, I'm confused there. Now, Nita currently has three models in China. They have the Nita V, the Nita V Pro, and the Nita U Pro, all starting at under US $15,000, all three of them. Now, Nita delivered 10,000 vehicles in December, the second consecutive month of more than 10,000 units. That's an increase of 236% year on year, which is extremely important in the way that I look at the growth of a company. Now, it was the 10th consecutive month of record deliveries for the company, bringing its total deliveries in 2021 to 70,000. That's an increase of 362% from one year ago. So let's have a look at the actual data here. There's a whole lot, lot of other nonsense from Wu and his team, which I think are just sitting around in an office getting high. So let's have a look at the actual real details here. Okay, electric only car makers in China aren't owned by a parent company. They're, I guess you could say, unicorn companies. And they just make electric cars. There's five big ones. Xpeng leads them, I believe. I'm invested in Xpeng and I recommend you invest in them as well. They had 16,000 sales in December. That was an increase of 181% year on year. Second, in terms of sales figures, was Neo with 10,500. That was an increase of 60% year on year. Neo has been growing much more slowly this year than Xpeng, but important to remember, Neo's average sales price is extremely high. In fact, it's the highest of any mainstream auto company in China. So it's worth considering that. In third place was Nita with 10,100 sales, an increase of 362% year on year. Fourth place was Leap Motor with 7,800 sales and an increase of 368% year on year. And in fifth place was WM Motor with 5,100 sales and an increase of 96% year on year. 96% still sounds pretty good, but in a comparison to those other three automakers I just listed, Xpeng, Nita, and Leap Motor, it's a pretty slow increase. Who's next? Well, next we've got the companies called GAC Aon. They sold 16,675 vehicles. But of course, these companies I'm about to list, including GAC Aon, are owned by a parent company. So Aon is owned by the parent company, GAC, who make lots of ICE cars as well. So they're not a unicorn company. You can't directly invest in Aon. If in China, you could potentially invest in GAC, but you can't just invest in the electric car company, Aon. It's not possible. Next up, we've got the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV. Obviously, that's Tri owned by SAIC, General Motors, and Wuling. They delivered around about 50,000 in December. Massive. Next up, we've got Zika. Zika delivered 3,800 vehicles in December. Obviously, that's a big increase over their previous month, but that's because they're a brand new car company. Obviously, Zika is owned by Geely. You can invest in Geely, but obviously, Geely make a lot of ICE vehicles as well. So you're not just investing in, in a battery powered company, you're investing in a company that predominant, still predominantly makes ICE vehicles. Next up, Voya. Voya sold 3,400 electric vehicles, which is an increase of 192%. They all are also owned by a parent company located in China. Next up, ArcFox. They sold 1,200. That's an increase of 700% because that's a new company, but also the same deal. They are owned by BAC, which is a car company, legacy auto, not kind of Chinese legacy auto in China. Next up, you have... Car companies that sell plug-in hybrids and or electric cars. In first place in this division was BYD. They sold 48,300 pure electric vehicles, but a total of 94,000 vehicles. The rest, majority of the rest of those were plug-in hybrids. 
about 95% of the cars that BYD sold in December were either plug-in hybrids or fully electric vehicles. About a 50, 50, about a 50, about a 55% electric vehicle to 45% plug-in hybrid mix. Next up, you've got Lee Auto. They sold 14,100 vehicles. They are considered one of the unicorn companies in Deutsche Bank's so-called expert list. You pay for this information, right? You're paying for this stuff. Now, obviously this team hasn't bothered to actually research the fact that Lee Auto doesn't sell any electric cars. They sell only plug-in hybrids, but they did increase their sales by 130% year over year for a total, pretty impressive, of what 14,100 vehicles. Next company you've got is Huawei Socon Series. It's a bit of a mess there. I don't know. The branding is very confusing, but essentially Huawei and Socon, they sold 6,150 combination of electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids in the month of December. That's an increase of 162% over the same month last year. Then we've got the foreign automakers. Volkswagen ID Series, they sold 13,800. And Tesla sold around 60,000. Of those vehicles, we don't know what percentage were exported and what percentage stayed in China. Probably the majority of those stayed in China, considering it was the last month of the year. So what do we have for a total? Well, total estimated new energy vehicle sales, including plug-in hybrids and fully electric. But remember, plug-in hybrids only make up around 10 to 15% of the entire new energy vehicle market. The rest of them are fully electric vehicles. Around about 450,000 were sold in December in China. That is enormous. That's more than the rest of the world combined. So the Fab Five, according to Deutsche Bank, are Xpeng, Li Auto, Neo, Nita, or Hoson, and Zika. Now, obviously, Zika is not a company you can invest in. They're owned by parent company, Geely. Like I said, Li Auto doesn't actually sell any pure electric vehicles. So that's their Fab Five. I think it's bogus. My real Fab Five here is number one, BYD. BYD sold 49,000 more electric cars than Lee Auto did in the month of December. Plus, BYD is the third largest battery company in the world based on the amount of batteries they deployed in December. Next up, we've got X-Pump. Next up, Neo. Next up, Nita or Hoson. And then in the final position, we have Leap Motor. Now, why Leap Motor? Well, Leap Motor sold 7,800 electric vehicles in the month of December. That's 7,800 more than Lee Auto sold. But remember, here's the crucial part of information. Leap Motor sales increased by 370% year over year. And that is a huge difference compared to Lee Auto's increase of 130%. In fact, it's three times greater sales rate in one year. So what we can see here is that Leap Motor is growing incredibly quickly and they only sell electric cars. In other words, they only sell the cars that the majority of people in China actually want to buy. So that's your quick overview. I hope you've seen from the spreadsheet here. I'll give you a link in the description below to my spreadsheet I've created for you. You can you can use this however you want. You can look at this information. You can we can I'll do another one next month in January. You can compare those numbers. You can see who's winning, who's losing. You can decide who you want to invest in. But either way, this is going to give you basically a good snapshot of electric car sales in China right now. Why are there no legacy auto companies here other than Volkswagen? because they hardly even register on this list. The electric car sales are so small in December, or actually in all of 2021 in China, that it's not even worth putting them on here because they're in the single digits. Since I recorded this video, some of the information has slightly changed. So I've updated the spreadsheet to reflect that new information. When more information comes to hand, I'll continue to update this spreadsheet, which you will have access to simply by clicking the link in the description below. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.